So how will AR extend human capacity and human imagination? Our next speaker highlights the inventions, concepts, and opportunities that will forever change the way we experience reality. Dr. Helen Papagianis is recognized as a world leader expert in the field of augmented reality. She has been working with AR for a decade as a researcher, designer, and technology evangelist with a focus on storytelling and creating compelling experiences in AR. Her work and research in the field include her past roles as Chief Innovation Officer at Infinity Augmented Reality and Senior Research Associate at York University's Augmented Reality Lab. She is also the author of The 40 Ideas That Will Change Reality, which documents the inventions, concepts, and opportunities that will forever change the way we experience reality, and it will be available soon. So please join me in welcoming Helen to the stage. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Tom. Tom, Steve Mann, and I are all from Toronto, so it's nice to have a little Canada here in California. Yeah, yeah Toronto, Canada, who was that? All right. Yes, Canada. Um, so good morning, everyone. It's always really amazing to see the Augmented Reality family. It's my fifth time speaking here at Augmented World Expo. And a warm welcome to our extended family in virtual reality, the Internet of Things, and wearable tech this year. So, I mean, I still have goosebumps from hearing the, the keynotes and all the conversations off stage this morning. It's been a truly inspiring event. And as we all know, it's no longer about the technology. It's about augmenting reality for humanity and having a positive impact on the world. We've been talking about creating compelling content and meaningful experiences that are contextual. And it's so exciting for me to see our community growing and our industry heading in this direction. Now, it's not going to be an easy task to continue to do this. And some may even say that it's going to require superhuman strength. So how fitting that our theme this year is superpowers to the people. And I was thinking about my superhero power, and I love to fly, so I would really love that. And I'm sure each one of you has your own secret superpower, superpower wish. But here's the thing that gets me and really inspires me about people like you and our industry, is that you already have these superhero powers. Whether you're here as a, as a developer, or you're designing hardware, or you're an artist, you are already changing the way we experience the world. You're already pushing the limits of what's possible. And one reason that I know this is true is because you're inventing your own vocabulary. You're inventing new words for things that don't yet exist. Where's Christopher Stapleton? He is at the back, and he is a genius, period, but also really excellent at designing and, and developing new words. We also heard new words from Tom Furness this morning and Steve Mann. So if you're working on something and you don't quite have the word for it, go talk to these three superheroes. I'm sure they've already thought about it. And for us to continue on this path and to make augmented reality the best medium it can be, it's going to be about pooling our superhero powers and really taking an interdisciplinary approach. And we heard Tom Furness talk about that this morning. So we all need to come together, you know, the arts and, arts and sciences, because that's where the magic happens and that's how we're going to create this truly super medium. Now, I'm not the only one who dreams of flying. It's been a long wish of humanity, and it's something we've made it into a reality. And we continue to push the boundaries up. And to me, this image signifies the spirit of invention, of innovation, of creativity, of making these wonderful dreams into realities. With any great technology, there is wonderful opportunities and potential. However, there's also the possibility of peril. And to me, this image also hints at the Greek myth of Icarus. Now, Icarus plunged to his death when his man-made wings of wax, uh, he flew too close to the sun and, and he died. And this is a story of, of human hubris. So as we are exhilarated about this new medium and we're designing and pushing the boundaries of what's possible, you know, let's maintain that excitement, but let's also be highly cognizant of the impact and the consequences of the things that we are creating. Let's choose good, let's say yes to good, like David Brin just said. And that image also finds itself on the cover of my upcoming book that I'm really excited to announce today here at Augmented World Expo. It's published with O'Reilly Media. You may remember the title being The 40 Ideas That Will Change Reality. It's morphed into something bigger now that I'm really excited to be working on with O'Reilly. And 
the book looks at designing for the best of humanity and the best of technology. And you know, looking at what the new opportunities truly are in this medium as we're advancing augmented reality for humanity. So this includes things like computer vision and machine learning and sensors coming together to create new ways of experiencing our world. Yesterday we heard Rajiv um, Mangia from Intel talk about a project that RealSense um, is working on that allows the blind to see. Now, augmented reality is not just about vision. We've placed an emphasis on the visual over the past few years. It's also about the other senses. So how can we use augmented reality to create a spectrum of the full human sensorium, including things like touch, taste, and smell? And of course, new stories for new, new screens and new interfaces. We've been hearing a lot about storytelling um, this year, and it's where I began my work, so that's, of course, in the book. And lastly, how these new inventions are mirroring human physiology. So, so Tom Furness talked about the virtual retinal display um, this morning, so that's something else that the book looks at. And I'm really also excited to announce that both our keynote speakers this morning, Tom Furness and Dr. Steve Mann, will be contributing forwards to my book. Um, they're two amazing mentors that I really look up to, and I'm, I'm just over the moon to have them involved. Now, how many of you remember something that looks like this? You know, this was 10 years ago, my first experience of augmented reality, um, using Dart Designer's Augmented Reality Toolkit out of Georgia Tech. And you know, forget about tablets or eyewear or smartphones. No, this was on a desktop using a webcam. And it required um, six fiducials or six black and white augmented reality glyphs to conjure up one blue cube, and that's all it did. It was just a cube, nothing more. And it, it didn't matter. For me, I was incredibly hooked. I was dazzled. I was awed. And I began to ask, well, what kinds of new stories will this allow us to tell? How can we push the boundaries of this and, and go past it being just a technology? How can it be a new medium? And I went into this kind of mad scientist prototyping, hacking mode, breaking things and making things. And one of the projects that came out of that work was a book called Who's Afraid of Bugs? And I showed that uh, here at Augmented World Expo in 2010, and as well as TEDx Dubai in 2010. And it was the world's first book using image recognition on the iPad. Now, you would place your hand down, and various creepy crawlies would crawl across your hand. In this case, a big hairy tarantula. And one of the things that I, I walked away from this project was that I recognized how powerful augmented reality could be to trigger emotion and emotional experiences. So the last image I showed you was just about the technology, no content, no storytelling. This project looked at technology and storytelling coming together. And this work by Chris Milk called The Treachery of Sanctuary is all about the storytelling. It's all about the emotion. The technology recedes into the background and becomes invisible. The emotion and story are front and center. And I think this is where we are headed with augmented reality, and we will see more kinds of experiences that are truly experiential. Now, I think that the Connect was really instrumental in this shift because it brought the human body into the experience. The human body now became the marker. And Johnny Lee, who worked on, you may remember him as the Wii Remote guy in those YouTube videos, he, was, uh, he worked on the, on the team that, that, that created the Connect, and he's, uh, he's here today speaking on behalf of um, Google and Project Tango, where he is now. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what he will be talking about. Now, for me, I don't want augmented reality to supplant or replace the human imagination. It's about extending it. It's about dreaming new realities and, and new ways of experiencing the world. And the other thing that I want to say with this slide is that emotion is the doorway to empathy. And empathy is what really makes us, it makes us human. So this afternoon, Mark Billinghurst will be talking about empathy and augmented reality on the main stage, and you'll want to check him out as well. How many of you remember an app called WordLens? Yeah, so WordLens was acquired by Google and uh, integrated into Google Translate, and words, WordLens was uh, whether it was on Google Glass or on a smartphone, you would hold up 
your device and you would look at a printed sign and you would have a translation on the fly. So imagine being in a foreign country, looking at a road sign or a menu and being instantly able to translate the world around you. Now that was a great example of augmented reality um, in utility, right? Of, of creating a positive example um, of using technology to engage with your environment in a new way. This example is called OrCam, and it's a way that augmented reality is really changing people's lives. It's a pair of glasses with sensors for the visually impaired and allowing them to see their environment. So when the wearer has the, the device on, they point at something, whether it's a face, a sign, currency, and it is then read back to them. And again, a really positive example and having a profound impact on humanity. I would love to see more examples of this in augmented reality. In 1996, Nicholas Negroponte, founder of the MIT Media Lab, said, computing is not about computers anymore. It is about living. And the same is true with augmented reality. It's no longer about the technology. It's about choosing how we want to live in this new reality. Now, the good news is, is that all of us are just are designing those blueprints. So we get to choose what that looks like. And let's not make it look like this, because we don't want to be swallowed by our devices. We don't want to become invisible. We want the technology to become invisible. And the focus to be on human moments and the human experience, because I want to be able to see you, and I want you to be able to see me. So let's keep this in mind as, as we're moving forward to design human-centered experiences. Peter Diamandis, uh, founder of the XPRIZE, recently wrote an article that some of you may have read. And he identified eight areas that will disrupt the next decade. And augmented reality was on that list, which is, I'm sure, no surprise to all of us. And he talked about the various industries that augmented reality will disrupt. And he said that it will have a fundamental way that we operate as humans. It will impact this in a great manner. And I can't disagree with that. We've been hearing talks over the past couple of days and, and, and today about how this will impact our humanity, and it's something that we really need to think about. So I hope you'll pick up um, Augmented Human, and one of the things that I really like about O'Reilly is that they have this thing called early, re early release, where there are chapters available online in advance of, of the book release, so you'll be able to pick them up online. So you can check out arstories.com, and I'll be making more announcements on Twitter, arstories. So Thanks for your attention today, and I can't wait to see what we're going to do in the next year, let alone the next decade. So thank you so much. So we have some time for some questions. So raise your hands. We have the mics running around. Here, I'm just going to block my. Oh, OK, great. Quick question. When was your book release? So we're aiming for fall 2015. And again, I mentioned the early release. So you'll be able to get chapters hopefully in the coming months. And so early release, the way it works is that um, you will pre-order and you can get the chapters in advance. And then when everything's done, it's, it's shipped to you. So you have both the hard copy and the ebook. OK. Thank you so much, Helen. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Thank Congratulations you. on your book. Thank you.